John here. Right now I'm going to be uh, cleaning on my 642 and I figured maybe I'd let y'all see how dirty it is. See the dirt up in there and on the end of the cylinder. And I'll just show y'all uh, how I clean it. First thing I like to do is I'll take me a, uh, a dry toothbrush and I'll brush the uh, any of the soot I can from around the hand area where the cylinder uh, ratchet goes and then around the uh, firing pin there because when I put oil on that I don't want the uh, I don't want the soot to get in the little holes and get down in the action I want to limit as much of it as I can so start with I just brush what I can dry wipe my brush off occasionally and that does actually pretty good better than you'd think it would and I get up underneath the cylinder or the uh, ejector here which is kind of a hard place to get well, if you work at it, you can get it. <clears throat> so then what I'll do is I'll take me a rag. And I'll wet it with, uh, in this case, rim oil. But either uh, Hops 9 or rim oil or some kind of oil if I can't find any kind of cleaner. But I prefer to use something thin like rim oil or CLP maybe. And then I'll wipe wipe the soot out of uh, all the nooks and crannies. Maybe go back and get something to mist. But you don't want to you don't want to spray this in here with oil and spray a bunch of soot down in the action because You'll end up uh, gumming your action up and you have to take it apart and clean it more often. So I'll take my, take my rag and try to get what I can. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and clean the uh, the bore and the and the chambers, I guess. I'll take me a, either a mop or a patch, using a mop because that's what I had. Wet it with hops. Run that in and out a few times. And you don't want to get hops all over everything. So you try it like this so anything that runs will run out of the chambers so that way it doesn't run down into the uh, to where the yoke is. You don't want to. You don't want to get hops on your yoke or uh, or on the uh, pivot for the yoke. You want that to stay lubricated. Hops isn't a lubricant; it's cleaner. So, a mop like this is about like three dozen patches, probably. So should be doing all right with that. Just get good like that. You want to make sure when you push your mop or your patch, your jag or whatever through, you don't push it in and let it bust into the uh, into the breech face here, because that metal piece can can damage it if you hit it. So a lot of times I'll put my thumb in the way or put a uh, rag in the way if I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to hit it. And I find revolvers kind of difficult to clean because there, there's really no way to get everything. and You don't want to get everything covered in hops because you, uh, you want the gun to stay lubricated. But you want to get the dirt out of it. So It's 
become one of those things you just gotta have practiced a little bit. Now let's see here. Let's hold it up to light and look at my chambers. They could use the scrubbing. So I'll see if I can find me a brush. Y'all might notice I'm using a GI cleaning rod here. I do kind of prefer it. Not that it's any better than uh, one of the other pistol rods you can get. Scrubbing that last part of the chamber pretty good because that's where the that's where you'll get a build up of uh, firing residue. And if you shoot lead bullets, you get lead there. I don't see much of that with uh, plated bullets, but I'm sure some gets in there. Make sure when you're doing this, you're careful that your cleaning rod doesn't run sideways up into your rifling. If you was using an aluminum rod or something like that, it'd be a little safer, but I'm used to the metal rod now. Kind of rub on that a little bit. Don't want to do too much. You take the finish off. But I don't worry about it on this gun because there ain't hardly no finish left on it anyway. Now, let's see. Y'all didn't know I had that, did you? <laughs> That's what being a carpenter can do. It can give you some hiding spots. You got a mama that loves you like I do. You can talk her into cutting you up a couple years supply of patches when she ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Some people would use a separate clean patch for the, each cylinder, but I don't. I just kind of mop the soot out of it best I can with. The dirty one. Let's see. And then I'll switch to a clean one. Try to get good and tight. Make sure you don't get any of your cleaning solvent on your uh, grips if it's going to damage them. Which I don't think it'll damage these Uncle Mike's grips, but I don't want to find out either. Because I'll need another 20 bucks to buy me another set. nice and clean it could be cleaner though I believe I do see some 
build up down in there. <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna worry about it too much. At least not right now. Go ahead and wipe all your excess solvent off. Don't want to get any excess solvent down in the uh, pivot for the cylinder if you can avoid it. That's not real clean, but just kind of giving you an idea how to do it. What I'll do is I'll take me a Another patch and wet it. Oops. Go ahead and wet each chamber good. <coughs> See what else I can find. Hmm. Piece of sawdust. You know what? I forget I have this one up there. I'll just use two. I believe that's a 40, 40 caliber brush. Might be a 45, I don't know. But I'll do like this on each chamber and then I'll. Uh, I'll run a couple more patches through until it all comes out clean. And I'll oil it up good and uh, put her back in service. So, appreciate y'all being with us. This is John signing off.